Welcome back. Um, today I will talk about operating leases. So we will discuss first of all what are operating leases and how do they affect financial reporting. There are many alleged benefits of operating leases, but most of these so-called benefits are only accounting benefits, but not actual benefits that translate into long-term value creation. So we will look into these issues and then most importantly, we discuss how we can adjust for operating leases. And again, this is one of the important issues in practice which are not discussed in most um, in academic books um, or in, in the literature. So let's get into this. So what is an operating lease? I'm quite sure you might have come across the term operating leases um, in accounting classes. It's usually discussed um, but not really discussed in, from the perspective um, of um, value creation. So what's um, an example here? So for instance, um, you look at a company, the company owns an operating asset. So again, going back to our discussion of invested capital, this asset should be part of um, fixed operating assets. So it should be part of um, invested capital. Once um, this um, um, asset is part of invested capital, it also affects our assessment of profitability, which we measure using the return on invested capital. And we already discussed that um, in order for value creation to happen, um, ROIC has to exceed cost of capital. Yeah? So um, it is an, a, a very important part of our assessment to get the operating assets right. And again, we focus um, here on the perspective of operations, not the legal perspective, not the accounting perspective, and that's actually very important in this context. Now, uh, of course, once you um, have an operating asset, like, say, a store, it would be part of your net property plant and equipment. And of course, it has to be financed as well, as anything on the balance sheet has to balance. So it's either backed by some debt or by some equity. Yeah? So what, what can you um, do in operating leases? So for instance, the company could decide that um, they don't really want to own the store. They only want to um, operate in the store, but um, another company should own it. So um, how can they arrange it? They can do a so-called operating lease. So in an operating lease, uh, this company would sell the asset, um, maybe in this example for 200 million pound, to another company, the so-called lesser. And it would rent um, the asset back. Now, um, that kind of transaction from um, an accounting perspective has a profound implication for your balance sheet, because all of a sudden when you sell the asset, well, your um, assets go down by 200 million. You get, of course, the money from the sale, which you can then use to potentially reduce um, the amount of debt you have, or you can use the money to buy back shares, for instance. So there is a significant change happening on your balance sheet. However, however, in terms of operations, the key question to ask is, is anything changing? And here the answer is no, because you still run the same business. The only difference is you do not legally own the store, you are um, renting it. But it doesn't change your business. Your business is still the same. So from a valuation perspective, the value of a company should not change. However, you see lots of changes happening um, in the balance sheet and also in the income statement. Yeah? And this is quite important um, to realize um, and hence we have to look out for operating leases and we have to adjust um, reported, um, reported figures um, in the income statement and balance sheet. Let's look into this um, a little bit more in detail. So um, the main purpose um, from a, a company perspective is um, quite frequently to look asset light. So the idea is you cut down on your assets, um, you know, based on 
your balance sheet reporting and by doing that all of a sudden it looks as if your profitability is better. Now how is that possible? Um, well if you look at measures like return on assets um, once you cut back on assets you will most likely um, boost your return on assets um, and so it looks better um, on paper. But again, of course, there is nothing happening here in terms of actual or real value creation. It's just simply um, a legal process, but not a process that actually affects your operations. I give you an example. Now, this work we have done uh, many, many years ago. Um, this is just looking um, at an example in, in, in the US, in, in US retail. Um, two companies, Kohl's and Target, and they have a very different setup about um, whether they own or lease their stores. In the case of Target, they mostly own their own stores. As you can see, a few are leased. In the case of Kohl's, it's um, exactly the opposite. Um, so that makes um, quite a difference. When you also look at the lease payments, so these are the payments relative to profits, um, it's quite substantial in the case of Kohl's. Now, if you do not adjust for leases, um, it looks as if Kohl's is doing a lot better. Yeah? Because obviously, by having a far, far fewer assets, your invested capital looks much, much lower for the same level of profit. Of course, you have to pay um, money for it, but end of the day, um, it works out um, to an advantage. But once you adjust for these payments, you see a massive shift um, in terms of profitability measures. So this is quite a different picture. Um, so from this perspective, um, it is really important to understand what's going on um, in your income statement and in your balance sheet. Now this is an avert example, um, just um, using um, some, um, you know, um, some generated figures. So this is not um, based on an actual client of mine, but I just played around with some figures. So here we have revenues, expenses, we have here rental expenses, initially there's nothing, we have our EBITs, um, then we have interest expenses, um, and then we pay taxes on it, and so on. we have our net income, we have earnings per share, we have 100 million in number of shares outstanding, we can determine of course our return on assets um, without any problem, we make certain assumptions here, but um, again this of course is, can be changed. Um, then we have some short-term assets, so this is part of your um, net operating working capital. We have long-term assets, and um, so, um, so that's part um, of what we have to assess in this case. We have operating assets, um, which refers to a combination of the two. And then we have some um, operating liabilities, um, so these um, would, would belong to your working capital. We have then some financing in place, we have debt equity finance, um, and of course in total we have to balance the balance sheet. Yeah? So this is how it looks initially. Now um, when you consider operating leases, um, the whole structure is changing. So if you assume for instance that um, we sell this 200 million operating assets, so it could be a store, could be anything else. Um, then, of course, um, this operating lease um, um, structure um, will have implications um, for, um, for this particular business. So, of course, we can now discuss um, um, what is the appropriate level of rent and how will rents, for instance, change. Yeah? So, of course, that is um, an assumption you would, you would make in this particular case. But what you now see is that your operating um, assets go down because your long-term assets are going down by the operating lease. Um, at the same time, of course, you now have to start some rental um, um, payments. But there are um, two different components um, in these rental payments, which I should have spelled correctly. Um, there is one component um, looking at um, the implied interest payment, and the second component is a compensation for the depreciation of the asset. Now, how does that really work out? So the, the logic is the following. If you sell um, an asset to another company, the lesser, this lesser, of course, um, has to get some compensation 
for it because um, well, the lesser needs to finance the asset. Now um, that can be done using debt or it can be done using equity. In our case we, we treat operating leases as a so-called debt equivalent. So we would use as a, as a benchmark here the cost of debt. So a lesser um, would need to finance the um, purchase, so this lesser would need a compensation for the interest payments. The other um, element of it is, of course, um, the um, actual asset depreciates in value. Um, and again, this depends on how many years of use you have for the respective assets. So in our example, we assume 20 years of use, which would imply um, 5% um, of depreciation in this case. Now, of course, that is an assumption. Yeah? And of course, um, it, it depends on the type of asset you're, you're leasing, uh, but it's quite plausible um, for this to be somewhere in the region between 5 and 20 years, depending on the type of asset. Now, um, this payment then is a combination of two things, depreciation and um, an implied interest payment. Now, um, only parts of this payment is actually operating, and that makes the adjustment more complicated, because only the um, depreciation would be an operating expense. The implied interest payment, which is hidden in this payment, is actually a financial component and should be treated as an interest expense. The problem is, um, in terms of reporting, rental expenses would be simply put into operating expenses. Yeah? So they have to be um, adjusted for implied interest payments. And the other adjustment, of course, you have to make is you have to um, so-called capitalize the operating lease based on reported uh, rental expenses um, and put it back um, on your balance sheet, which um, is important because you have to adjust your invested capital. So these are the various issues that you face in practice um, and obviously um, that is a significant amount of work. So this is usually where you will spend most of your time. The actual modeling in Excel is, is, um, is one part, but most of your time will be spent on you know, looking through the reports, checking the notes, checking very carefully are there any operating leases and if so, what's the likely impact um, on this particular business. So, um, so these are the issues um, which we have to discuss. So very briefly, only to summarize, um, if you um, engage in operating lease, there is no actual value creation happening. Yeah? It's just um, um, a legal contract that changes the ownership um, of an asset. It has implications um, for the way you report yeah, it has implications on that. It affects, um, um, of course, your assets. It also affects um, your operating expenses and hence um, your net income is affected. So the, the effects are quite um, complex. And again, um, in terms of adjustments, we have to look at a few things. Number one, we have to look at these, at these rental payments these lease payments and have to understand that um, parts of it are operating because it's a compensation for depreciation and parts of it are actually interest payments. They are hidden interest payments. And these hidden interest payments, they are not operating and they have to be added back to our um, um, calculation of no plant. Um, and finally, from the um, um, operating asset perspective, we have to capitalize the operating lease based on the rental payments um, and then we have to add it back um, to our balance sheet when we want to calculate invested capital. Now this is just an example again uh, which you might call the return asset miracle. It's just literally um, driven by the way um, you um, uh, modify um, your reporting and of course the operating lease has a significant impact um, on reported figures as we know. But of course, that is not a real thing. Yeah, so that is not a real thing. So now what we have to do is we have to undo the changes caused by operating leases. So here you see the main, the main steps. The first thing to, to look for is you look for the rental expense um, in the next year. So T plus one refers here to the next year. 
So these are so-called minimum lease payments um, for the next years. This gives you an idea about your obligation. Now, these are, of course, annual payments. Um, so to obtain the value of the asset, we have to capitalize them. Now, there are two different things happening here. The first thing is we have in this um, rental expense two types of payments. We have the interest payment, so that's cost of debt, and we have a payment to compensate for depreciation, and that is an operating part of it. So an appropriate discount factor is a combination of the two, yeah? because we have to compensate for implied interest payments and we have to compensate for depreciation, which you see in this formula where we divide by cost of debt and then plus one be divided by years of use. In our example, it was 20 years of use. It gives us 5% um, depreciation. And this will capitalize um, our rental expenses and we would get um, um, a value, an estimate of the value of the asset which we have to add back. So this is just an example here um, where you see how this would be worked out. So in this particular case, we would then increase our invested capital by the estimated asset value. And we would also increase, of course, the level of debt because end of the day, the balance sheet has to balance. So we, we put additional debt on the balance sheet. So you see that there are lots of effects, not only on measures of profitability, but also focused on measures of uh, financial sustainability, like financial leverage. It's also affected by operating leases. So that's an important step to consider. Um, then we have to look into the rental expenses. And as I said before, we have to split them into depreciation and the implied interest expense. Now the depreciation is simply one divided by years of use times the asset value. So that gives you an idea about depreciation. The implied interest expense is your cost of debt times the asset value. One note is that the cost of debt is uh, considered before tax because all the adjustments we do here um, is before taking taxes. Yeah? Taxes have to be considered later. Yeah, just as a work example, you might have 20 years of use. We have an asset value of 210 million. So we get 10.5 um, in applied um, interest expense and 10.5 in depreciation. Yeah, so this 21 million um, of um, total rental payment is half half in interest expense and a compensation for depreciation. Now we have to add back the implied interest expense to operating expenses because that is financing. Yeah? That is not operating. Yeah? So the um, EBIT will increase. So the earnings before interest and taxes will increase um, accordingly. And then the interest um, um, expense has to be increased by the implied interest expense. Yeah? So these are quite complex adjustments um, that we have to consider very carefully. In the end, we also then, of course, see um, um, the change in debt. And again, it reminds us that operating leases are what you call a debt equivalent. Yeah? So it is treated like, like having debt on your balance sheet. So in order to understand financial health of a company, yeah, so we have to, to look into this very carefully, we also have to consider adjusting our financial leverage for operating leases. And so there are implications, for instance, for um, cost of capital, because um, um, as we will discuss in more detail, the weighted average cost of capital, of course, depends on the level of debt. So once you adjust debt upwards, it will affect your, um, your cost of capital. So there are many implications here. It's actually quite complex. And again, in practice, this is really important. And from my perspective, in most um, academic uh, papers, it's hardly ever um, looked into. So I think it's important for you to understand that. Now here and another work example for um, the weighted average cost of capital. Um, so in this case, um, again, you see a significant change of the figures because the debt 
and equity ratio is changing after adjusting for operating leases. Now this has quite a tremendous impact um, on reported figures. Yeah, so um, in this particular case you see actually that your cost of capital um, goes down because you understate initially the level of debt. So the, the implications for valuation are very complex. Yeah? Because lower cost of capital would actually increase the value of the business. Yeah? But of course at the same time you have more debt. So if you go into the value of equity you have to deduct more from your operating value. Yeah? So um, how this works out in total you have to see after the adjustments. It will depend on all these different parameters including your cost of debt um, and other factors. So the adjustment is quite complicated but really essential. Good, I see you in the next.